All right, so this is a 2007 Toyota Tundra. As you can see here, uh, for the axle nut, I'm using a 39 millimeter 12 point. Now, I'll leave that for later. Um, I already took off apart the chauffeur side or the driver side. See all the parts here. Um, so you want to work really organized as you're putting stuff apart, and basically the tools you're going to need are a bunch. So I already took off the the wheel which takes a 22 millimeter for the lugs, all five going up here. Uh, I took off the cap here, and dispatched it on the side. It is going to get a little bent out of shape, but you just bend it back and then just put it back in. Just tap it in. Then, uh, yeah. Now I'm just going to take out the rear caliper, which is one bolt here, second bolt in the back. But before that, I'm going to take off this bolt. I'm going to take off this um, the ABS line here. I'm going to unclip it from here, unclip it from there. Need to move back this clip, open it up, push the tab in the back, and pull it out. Then once I have everything here detached with the caliper all the way back down, I'm going to dangle it from the top so I have no stress on the brake cable. And we'll keep on going from there. I'm going to take out this guy later on, then this guy. You guys will see as I go. I will be taking out these two bolts, big bolts on the bottom here. Not the ball joint, this one and this one. This is what you're going to end up with. See, I got the whole side here already disconnected. This is the old hub, new bearing, all installed, new seals, got an o-ring in the back, got a seal in the front, and as you can see I got the old bolts on and the old hub on. Everything is pressed in already, and new axle seal for the back also. 12 millimeter for here. So the way I go about this back clip here, is as you can see, it is a, uh, let's see if I can get you a better shot. All you have to do is just press on the two side tabs here, right here, just press them in, then push it out. So what I do is I just take these, press them in, and push it out. So I can give you a quick demo of that. I'll try. Let's see how well this will go. Without my phone falling, and let me see if I can just turn off my flashlight so you guys won't have that going on. There it goes. So I pull it on my other hand, and there we go. I'm going to do the same thing with this guy up here. Press the tabs in, and then pull it out with my other hand, and it should pop off. Now we're going to use a 17 millimeter. There we go. 17, 4, the rear two caliper barrel bolts, bottom and top. As you can see, after removing the two 17 millimeter bolts, I got it dangled up on this side by a strap. No tension on the brake, nothing weird going on. The ABS plug is loose, everything here is just dangling in space. The rotor I did have to hit a couple times. Um, just use my plastic mallet, hit it on one side. And I did also mark the rotor where it was pointing at the brake pads. Because in theory, in my class, it did show me that uh, if I mounted it another way, it might vibrate. But a little bit if the rotor's warped. But that's just theory stuff. It really shouldn't matter. But I don't know. I just marked it just as a custom as teach by the school. So now I'm just going to take my uh, puller here and move this axle back. Because it is stuck I could hammer it 
And I do have the tool for it. I have this guy, just put it right there in the center and hammer it a couple times, see if it moves. If it doesn't, now I'm just gonna push it back with the puller, put it around, put all three legs on the hub. Uh, this takes a 14 millimeter right here. Let me make sure that I should have my 14 mil around here somewhere. And 19, 21. Anyways, I just take my 14 millimeter sock and I'll show you. If it's not, it's a 17. So let's see. 14. Nope, it's a 17. So this is a 17 right here. As you can see, it does fit in there perfect. So, yeah, this is going to go on here. All three legs biting on each corner, centric. The bolt centered onto the centering hole here and just going to push it back just to loosen it up. And then I'm going to release one, two, three and four bolts which should be 17 mil this is our 19 no this is 17 so yeah they are 17 too i just don't know where i put my wrench at i don't see it anywhere here so it should be somewhere around here i'll look for it but it's a 17 release it they're not going to come completely out they're just going to tap against the hub it's normal stuff and as you can see the seal here is toast for the actual uh hub so another thing I got to replace too which I already have so here's my setup for leverage I got a big wrench over the 17 mil so this is a 17 this is a 27 millimeter can't see it it's just bad lighting turn on the flash real quick so 27 17 on a rusted bolt I'm just going to grab it out the very tip and start releasing. I can't do this with my left or right alone. I have to do it with both and just start loosening it up. And sure, you have to wiggle it in and push it in a little because it has a lot of rust and the rust will prevent you from easily putting the wrench in. So you have to wiggle it in, make sure it's all the way seated to the back the best you can. As you can see, mine is seated almost all the way, 90%. It's probably a mill or two off. You can see it right there on the corner, but it's going to come off. Not rounded. All right, so this is a setup, a three jaw hub, uh, gear puller, hub puller, sprocket puller, whatever. Um, basically had my hands like this. As you can see, I got one finger there, another here, my other fingers on the bottom. Right there, pushing against all three at the time while my other hand was going in with the screw here. And now that I have it set up, I'm just gonna start really, uh, pushing the axle in. So as we speak, this is a, the, the axle already pushed back and made a little snap back. And now as I'm cranking, it is going in. You can hear it snapping. So um, my setup basically is a big pry bar to the floor, a wedge against the stud all the way to the back. You don't want to mar the first ones. You only have up to here to clear. So yeah. Now that I made it pop, I'm probably going to call it quits and just keep on going with the bearing, pulling it out. and so forth so but I'm gonna to try to push it back a little more all I'm doing is looking here and looking back here and it is moving so yeah okay you see I do have the axle quite back so I just now I'm just gonna remove all these four bolts and pull this guy out So these bearings come out basically by hand for the most part. I don't even have to tap them because they're pretty protected inside their hubs or their knuckles. Or I might have to tap it out. I don't know. Let's see. So this has an O-ring here which seals it. Seals rust from going in. Same thing in the back. Another seal for the axle for rust for uh, any debris going in. So, yeah, there's the bearing out. Now I need to press the hub out, swap bearings, and put the old hub back on the new bearing, and put the old bolts on the new bearing too, then press the hub in, and blah, blah, blah. Here's the back seal. I will change it. That means I have to take out the whole knuckle, two bolts out, tie rod, upper ball joint. All right, so this is the setup. 
it's not the right one. It's the best I got for now. Um, if you guys have, uh, let's see here, where's my... So this is a trooper, four and a quarter inch. Um, you guys want to get probably four and a half to five, six by an eight inch thread. I have to, I had to buy these and they will bend. You can see I already used this for the first bearing. They bent, but they got the hub out. So, cause the OEM ones are not long enough. So yeah, these are five eighths by, I don't know if it's 13 or whatever. Let me see. 5 eighths, 11 threads per inch by 12 inch. So these are 12, this is a 12 inch rod. It's 5 eighths by 11. So that's my setup. As you can see, I have every nut squared with the face. Cause since this, this is not the ideal setup, I should have a, at least a 12 inch pipe or something to go around here, which I will buy soon. Um, yeah, what I'm basically going to be playing with is, with these wood planks, the brackets for the OEM brackets that the press brings, and I'm just going to be lining everything up and then making everything centric with the, uh, the press piston so I can push out the hub. So as you can see, Toyota made sure that these bolts would screw you up while you're putting it in, so I'm just doing my best to get it in there. So I already got some contact surface here, which is a good thing. Same thing over there, but yeah, basically this is gonna be pushed out. It's gonna push out and let's see what happens. I think these threads are gonna get screwed up. So will these, cause it's gonna push up while this is pushing down. So making my rods bend. So let's see how it works out. But that's basically a setup. This is a, this is a weasel your way through it. It's not the right way to do it, but next time I will be ready. But this is just the way I got it done. All right, so this is the way I'm weaseling through the job. As you can see, I do have a clamp over here, clamp over there, because they do flex upward a little bit, so that's why I have that. These aren't too tight because I don't want them to be really tight. I just want them to be tight enough so when the thing flexes a little bit, it has some counterbalance, they just keep on going down straight. Now, as for the centering um, cup that's going to push down my uh, hub out, is a Chalet A. D56 by D46. I know most most of you guys ain't gonna have this, so the or at least yeah. So the key is get yourself a socket that'll fit it or something compatible just to push down that. And what you're looking for, just like I say in every bearing pressed in bearing video, you just want to centric center straight in the center push that'll push out the bearing I have three planks here because i just want this to fall out and uh when i did it with two the studs hit the surface here so that's why i put three up and that that helped me push out the whole thing so here's part one see how it goes so as i pressed it down um different from the last one this one came out in one shot um, it did not come down making noise. It just made one big pop and everything just blew up into pieces or fell into pieces. You can see you got the little balls. Everything is detached. Uh, there's the other half. Now, as you can see here, this is why I bought two more threaded rods just to get by while I get the better, while I get the right tool for next time. Um, they end up really bent, but that doesn't matter. It's just a sacrifice threaded rod, so... Now I'm just going to take this, clamp it onto the bearing on each side, press it on on the press, and that's it. Now, other thing that happened during the press out was this bolt, the washer, was a little bent out of shape by the threads. So I'm going to shave this off a little bit with the grinder, make it flat again, and keep on going with the job. So a couple key points here is you can see that all my bolts are flat. So are the nuts. They're flat. I want a real flat surface on every side, each corner. I have just enough clearance to get by with the hub passing through because I want I want a lot of contact surface. 
I can't leave too much space because then it'll really, really wobble out. So I want to leave as less contact surface as possible. You can see I almost got a quarter inch here, quarter inch over here of gap. So giving you guys that other heads up and still thing, still same thing, double clamps just to hold that that tilty that tilty uh, effect that right, that of the pressure that goes down and a little bit of penetrating fluid on the ring. Just gonna press it down and let's see what happens. All right, so all I did was just push out the bearing cage and the bearings out. I'm gonna take all the fluff out and then I'm gonna take out the race. So here's the setup. As you can see, all flats of the bolts on the bracket. Same thing over here. The bolts are gonna bend a little bit, but this is a grade eight. I think it's a grade eight or grade or 10.9 metric. They do bend a little bit, but then they just straighten back. Or they just bend slightly. It's not a big problem like these over there, which are really bent. These I already reused a couple times just to pull out the race. But this is the setup. I will put this a little straighter so everything is a lot more centric. But you get the idea. You just want to get everything as straight as possible. Alright, so what I ended up doing, because it wouldn't work out on the press, is uh, I cut two angled sides here. Sides. Here's one side, here's the other, and uh, then I took the bearing with the hub all the way over here, got out my kneeling pad, got this, all right, it was all the way flush, all I did was hold it right in between my knees, like this, grab my chisel, put the chisel right in between the cracks, and once I smacked it a couple times, the one with the deepest crack, I think it was this one. Yep, this one was the deepest cut that I made. It cracked. You can see the crack right here. It cracked right through. Then I did the other side. I hit it with the chisel. This one, this side did not crack. That I can see. Oh yeah, it did. I can barely see it. But anyways, it cracked. And then I could just tap it out easily with my chisel. Uh, just hitting this out until this came off and now I got the hub free I'm just gonna feel the hub out check it and then put it on the new bearing which you'll be seeing soon all right so here's the seal for the bearing and hub side you can see you have this nice flat groove that's where this seal seats you got the other side with the o-ring I'm gonna give you something real quick so you guys get an idea for the seal this is the part number and then for the o-ring is this part number and I'm just gonna basically go on there put a little bit of grease a little bit of Schaefer stuff around here put the seal on and just tap it in with the uh, center punch gently it pops in pretty nice then um, I already got the o-ring installed you just loop around it just like a cartridge oil filter, just loop it around and seat it in the back. And that's it. So to remove the knuckle, you have to remove the top ball joint, the tie rod end, and the two bolts here on the bottom. These are two 22 millimeter bolts. This is a, I believe this is a 19. Let me look for the nut real quick and compare. Let's see, should be a 19. If not, 20, oh, 22, let's see, yep, oh, never mind, oh. 19, 21, let me grab this one. So this is a 19. This is for the top ball joint. Falls into like a charm. This should be a 22 millimeter. So 22 mil for the, you can see right here. Right. 21, 24, it's gonna be too big. Let's see. Nope, it's a 24. So 24 for the tie rod, 19 for the top ball joint, and a 22 millimeter. 
for the two bottom bolts that holds the whole knuckle in place. And now after doing that, you got it over here, you got the knuckle out, you can see you got the ABS sensor on the side, you got the seal. I'm just going to pop it out through the front with the center punch. I'm going to tap it right here around the rubber. One, two, three, four, and start popping it on it that way until it comes out. And then replace it with the new one. So I am cleaning up the, all the edges here, the flat. I'm going to clean the inner flat here. Now I'm going to clean the face over here. Right this whole edge of all the rust possible. I'm going to grease it up with the Schaefer's grease. Make sure just a little thin film around everything here. Then I'm going to install the seal. Brass. All right, so as you can see here, I have grease on all four corners of the inner side and the of the inner side and the outer side. And the reason is because I don't want that spring that's in there to pop out. So that grease acts like a glue. I have it on all four corners of, a, of the seal, same of uh, the spring also up here, you can see it. And all it is, and I just needed to uh, turn on the flash so I can retain that spring in there, little spring in there, right there behind the lip. That's what you want to be careful of. And then I lubed up the whole side, that's going to go into here. And this is almost a push on, but... I will need to punch it in also with the uh, center punch and just gently tap it with the mallet. Yeah, so. Yeah, I already got this already cleaned out and pre-lubed. Just going to install it. All right, so there's a seal installed. Just flush on all sides. Just went around with the center punch. Made sure I had it flat. So it looks from the inside very nice and beautiful. Seated. No spring out or anything. You want to be careful with the spring and probably have some assistance when installing it. Uh, somebody holding in the axle while you're installing it with the knuckle. That way the axle won't, won't push out the spring or anything. So, because sometimes the axle will go in a little sideways or a little more cocked than one side than the other and might make your seal go a little wobbly on each, uh, not wobbly, but you know, you'll just end up stretching out one side more than the other. You want to go in perfectly flush. So. An extra hand would help. All right, so all I did now was just uh, present the bearing and hub with all four bolts and the dust cover pre-installed. I mean, just just placed on there, square with the. Uh, so remember, the open side is for the caliper. So now I got everything pre-installed. I did put a little bit of a just a dot or two on uh, each bolt of this. Let me just show you real quick, give you a nice view. All right. Then uh, all I do is just present the bolts and I'm just going in with them. Remember that bolt I showed that was all a little bit uh, curved out? That's how it looks now. It looks a lot more flatter now. All I do is just shave off the excess at the bottom, but that won't disturb anything. I'm just going in with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it back on the car. I will put some anti-seize here on the spleens. I'm going to clean it real good and put some anti-seize here. And bolt everything back to spec. You'll see the torques as I go. Okay, so what I did was I put the uh, knuckle on this first, on these two bottom bolts first. I just put one in, aligned the axle to go right inside the spindle, or the hub, I mean. Then I put the tie rods and then I started torquing down on this guy. This guy's going to go to 249 foot pounds per the book, but you guys should always do your own research and make sure that that's correct and do it for yourself. All right, so for us, for the end of the video, the bolts that go onto the steering knuckle that I torqued by a combo wrench just went uh, hand tight, then tightened it a little more. I can't put a torque meter to them, they're too tight with the hub behind it. Um, so for the brake bracket, this bolt is nine foot pounds. The caliper bracket, which is this, the two bolts in the two big bolts in the back, that's 73 foot pounds. The ball joint knuckle bracket, which are these two big bolts here, this one here and this one here, that will be 221 foot pounds. 
The top ball joint, which should be this one right here, is 81 foot-pounds, and the tie rod end, which is this guy over here, will be at 51 foot-pounds. That's what I got off uh, Mitchell Pro Demand. Again, uh, give it at a, as a reference, but not absolute. You should do your own research. Make sure you got your stuff right, too, and get the job done right. All right. So I just want to give you guys that little update. I'm almost done. I'm going to put the wheel back on, and that should be it. Then I'm going to do the whole other side and call it a day.